Hello everyone and welcome to this new section. In this section, we are going to cover the basics of auto encoders. All right, so let's get started. First, I'm gonna cover the auto encoders intuition. So let's see what do you mean by auto encoders. So auto encoders are a type of artificial neural networks that are mainly used to perform a task of data encoding or what we call it representation learning. I know the concept might be a little bit strange, might be, might be a little bit weird at first, but it actually works like magic. And the overall idea of autoencoders is that we're gonna feed the exact same input data. We're gonna feed it as an input and we're gonna feed it as an output as well. Again, sounds pretty crazy, but again, that's how it works. And let's see what's the difference between autoencoders and just a regular feed forward artificial neural network. So on the left hand side here, this is the traditional feed forward artificial neural network in basically supervised during supervised training. So as you guys recall, we have we built our own artificial neural network using a series of layers. So we have our input layer, here we have a bunch of neurons in here in the hidden layer, and then here we have the output. And what we do is that we connect all the neurons in the input, we directly connect them using several weights to all the neurons in the subsequent layer. And then all the neurons here are fully connected to the layers in the subsequent, um, to the neurons in the subsequent layer and so on. And that's what we call it dense feed forward artificial neural network. When we wanna train a fully connected feed forward artificial neural network in a supervised fashion, what we do is we feed in images, let's say, you know, images of cats, for example. And then we say, you know what, my target label or my ground truth here will be, let's say, a cat. Okay. So what we do is we feed in the image along with the target label, another image of, let's say, a dog along with the target label. And we do that over and over again in a supervised fashion to teach or to train our uh, artificial neural network. And as I recall, as you guys recall beforehand, we used to train the feed forward artificial neural network by changing the values of weights. Once I change the values of weights, and then the network will be able to learn the mappings between the input data and the output data. All right. So that's basically all what we have covered in the past, and we are very familiar with it. And it makes sense, obviously. For auto encoders, it doesn't make sense at all. Okay, it just looks very, very weird. So what we do is that we obtain two of these networks and we call them the encoder decoder networks. So instead of using just one of them, we actually get two of them. Okay, so we put here, this one is what we call the encoder. We have an input, we have a series of neurons. And then as you guys can see here, that would be my first network which is called encoder and then what we do is that we obtain another network and this network we call it a decoder here okay and we put them in an opposite fashion so we actually put this as you guys can see here the output from here will from the first network will be fed as an input to the end of the last network okay i'm going to show you that in a lot more details in the next lecture but the overall idea is that we get two networks opposing to each other just you know it's kind of working like you know like a in an encoder decoder fashion and when we train these auto encoders we actually use the same exact data so we use the exact same images which is let's say a cat here as an input and we use a cat as an output as well all right okay so how does that make any sense so the overall idea is because we feed in the exact same input data and the output data we are trying to force the network during training to, to create what we call an encoded version of our input. So we create here a layer, which is what we call it the code layer. And that's what we call an encoded cat image. Think of it as kind of, you know, you're trying to um, like compress the data. If you guys, for example, wanna like, let's say um, you have is, like large files and you wanna to zip these files, just compress them. This is pretty much the same idea. We wanted to Take this image of the cat and compress that image. We want to get rid of any correlated inputs, any pixels that are correlated. We can compress them somehow. And that's how we do it here by basically feeding in the exact same input, the exact same output, feed them to the network. 
the network will try to force basically to, to take this image, try to compress it here, okay, into that we'll call it the code layer. I'm going to show you that in the great details afterwards. So after afterwards, we try to reconstruct the image, the exact same image from our code layer here. And that's how we do it when it comes to auto encoders. We basically try to create an encoded version of our training data. That's all what it is. All right. So if you guys are a little bit confused, let's take a look at another kind of a little bit more details. As I mentioned here, we have, we, we obtained two networks. The first one is what we call the encoder layer. Okay. Which is again, here, let's say if we have, for example, let's say five neurons in the input, we force the actual image here to be compressed. That's why here, which is what we call it the bottleneck or what we call it the code layer, which is kind of again, an encoded version of our cat image. Let's say it will be three neurons only, for example. And afterwards, we try to reconstruct the original image from this, from our encoded version of our cat image. And that's how we come up with basically um, um, the, again, the original or the original input, which is the exact same cat image after we pass in the um, code layer to our decoder network. All right. So the auto encoders work by adding a bottleneck in the network. And that's very important because what you need to do is that you need to here to create a bottleneck. So the network will be forced to create an encoded version of the image. So again, this bottleneck forces the network to create a compressed or encoded version of our original input. And auto encoders work very well. And that's very important, actually. If correlations exist between the input data, which is basically if our images or our input, if all the pixels are extremely not correlated, which means they are, are independent from each other, then it will be very difficult to perform compression. Okay, because again, they are not correlated. Auto encoders work great if our input here has correlations between the pixels or there is some correlations of some sort, basically trying to compress them. And instead of having, let's say, two, um, two vectors, we can compress them and have one vector instead to represent both of them. And that's how we do basically a compression. All right, okay. So there's a great reference, which is called Intro to Auto Encoders by Jeremy Jordan. I actually have it open here. It's actually very, very interesting. So if you guys go here to this blog, you'll find a ton of information. So a lot of information about, you know, having our hidden layer in here and perform as a bottleneck, which start to compress basically the image and or, or compress the, the data. And uh, basically what, what auto encoders work is that they try to form what we call it principal component analysis. It's just the same idea as PCA. And actually we're going to discuss PCA in the next, um, next couple of lectures. Basically PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique. It's like trying to compress, for example, let's say like a, like a 3D, let's say image and compress it into only 2D, two dimensions only. All right. Okay. So again, if you guys check it out, so there's a ton of information here, ton of um, useful data. And there's a lot of math. I'm going to cover a, lot of, a little bit of the math again in the, next, um, in the next lecture and some of the applications as well. All right. So um, the last point that I wanted to discuss in this lecture is we actually have performed some image encoding beforehand in the past, actually in the previous uh, section, but we didn't call it directly encoding. If you guys recall, in a, in a, a convolutional neural network, we had our image and then we perform a certain convolutions. So if you guys recall, we had a convolutions layer here, which is simply feature uh, detectors that try to extract features out of my image. And what we have done afterwards, is they have performed pooling or max pooling, if you guys recall, to try to compress the feature maps and make them a little bit smaller, if you guys remember, which is what we call it that pooling or uh, down sampling. And then what we have done here is that we took all these kind of reduced feature maps, and then we flatten it up. And that's what we call it an encoded version of our, of our original image. And that's actually pretty, that's pretty much encoding. That's actually what we have done beforehand in the past is instead of feeding in the exact same image directly to our network, we actually went through a series of operations, extracting features and then compressing it somehow. And then we come up with kind of an encoded version of our original image. 
So we have, we have already done that. But here, when, when it comes to auto encoders, we are doing it a little bit differently. It's kind of a little bit tweaking in there by forcing the actual network to have a bottleneck in, in, uh, in the center. So CNNs actually perform, actually this should be performed, so the performs encoding by taking the feature detectors and converting them into a compact single dimensional output here, which is the flattened version, which is again being fed to the fully connected dense network. So again, we have done encoding before, so it's not that new to us, but that's the overall intuition of auto encoders. In the next lecture, I'm gonna walk you through the auto encoders mathematics. There's a little bit of math. I'll try to make it as, you know, like less painful as possible. Again, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's recap what we have done so far. In this lecture, we covered the intuition of auto encoders, and we found that we are gonna basically create a bottleneck in our network to try to force the network to kind of encode our input data. And one important feature when it comes to training of autoencoders is that we don't have any labels. We're actually gonna feed in the input and the output. We're gonna be pretty much the same. We're just gonna feed the image of a cat and the image of a cat as well. And by doing this, we're gonna force the network to try to create an encoded version of our data in here and try to reconstruct it afterwards to create pretty much the same again image of the cat, but now I have an encoded version of, our, of my image after the training is complete. An important point to, to clarify here is that autoencoders, they are unsupervised training strategies. Again, because we don't have an output, we're gonna use the exact same input, which is X-Train, which is again, bunch of images of cats. We're gonna feed it the same for the input and the output as well. All right. And if you guys, again, uh, as a review, we, we create what we call the code layer, which is again, the encoded version in here, which is basically our bottleneck. And then we covered that we have already done encoding beforehand when we trained our basic CNN by creating the flattened version in here, which is basically an encoded version of our images and of our, uh, after performing feature detectors and max pooling as well. And that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please enjoy TensorFlow 2.0 Practical Advanced. And see you guys in the next lecture.